Hey guys, here's lesson 6.6, .6, add and subtract mixed numbers. Our essential question for today is how can you add and subtract mixed numbers with unlike denominators? So we're gonna go ahead and put a star next to our essential question and get started. Denise mixed one and four fifths ounces of blue paint with two and one tenth ounces of yellow paint. How many ounces of paint did Denise mix? So it, over here on the side, it says, what operation should we use to solve the problem? So we have one and 44, one and four fifths ounce of blue paint with two and one tenth ounces of yellow paint. And they're wanting to know how much did she mix? Well, we want to add them together to figure out our total. So I'm going to addition. And do the fractions have the same denominators? Well, we know this one has a 5 and this one has a 10, so we would say no, they don't have the same denominator. So now we're going to add those two uh, mixed numbers together to find our answer. It says to find the sum of mixed numbers with unlike denominators, you, you can use a common denominator. But the first thing we're going to do when we see this problem is we're going to estimate. So I have 1 and 4 fifths. I know that 4 fifths is close to 1 whole. So I would say 1 plus 1 equals 2. So I would have 2 plus two and one tenth. One tenth is close to zero, so if I added zero to two, I would have two. So I would have two plus two would give me four. So that's gonna be my estimated amount. Our second step, we're going to find the common denominator. Use the common denominator to write equivalent fractions with, unlike, with like denominators. So right here, we're going to look over here and we're going to see what does 5 and 10 have in common. So I'm going to list out my multiples. I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, and I'm going to do my smallest or my least common denominator and I see that they have 10 in common. So I know that my denominator is going to be 10. This one's not going to change so I'm just going to bring that all the way across. This one is going to change a little bit. So I know 5 will go into 10 two times so I'm going to multiply my 5 times 2 and whatever I do to the bottom I have to do to the top times 2 so I know 4 times 2 is 8 and then I bring my whole number across. Now I can add the fractions uh, just like I normally would. I know 8 plus 1 is 9 tenths 1 plus 2 is 3, so my answer would be 3 and 9 tenths ounces of paint. Tenths ounces of paint. And we would know our answer is reasonable because we would look at our estimate. Our estimate was, up, was 4, and 3 and 9 tenths is about 4, so we know our answer would be reasonable because of that. Um, then our, our other question says, what other common denominator could you have used? Well, we probably could have used 20 as well. Um, but we all want to make sure that we use the least common just because it makes it a little bit easier on us in the end. So let's keep moving on. Flip to the back. This one's subtracting. I feel like the addition is a little bit easier than subtracting. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Um, but we'll see how it goes and see what you feel. All right, so we have the fractions 4 and 5 6 minus 2 and 3 fourths. It says you can use a common denominator to find the difference of mixed numbers with unlike denominators. So we're going to estimate again. So I have 5 6 is close to 1. So 1 plus 4 would give me 5 minus 3 fourths is close to 1. So I have 1 plus 2 equals 3. So I would have 5 minus 3 equals 2. So my answer is probably going to be around 2. Next, we find that common denominator. So use the common denominator to write equivalent fractions with like denominators. So I have a 6 and I have a 4. So I'm going to come over here to the top and I'm going to list my multiples of both 6 and 4. So I have 6, 12, 18, 24, 32. And I'm going to stop right there. Now I'm going to do the same thing with, um, sorry, not 32. That's 30. Huh. 
messed up. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing with four. I have four, eight, 12, 16, 20. I feel like that's enough because I see that they have 12 in common. So my denominator is going to be 12. Now, let's go ahead and figure out. I know that 6 will go into 12 two times, so I'm going to multiply that times 2. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So 5 times 2 is going to give me 10. I bring my whole number across. And now let's do the same thing for this side. I know that 4 times 3 is going to give me 12. So whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 3 times 3 is 9. And I bring across my whole number. Now I have 10 twelfths minus 9 twelfths is going to give me 1 twelfth. And 4 minus 2 is 2. So 2 and 1 twelfth is going to be close to 2. So I know that that is a reasonable answer. All right. Let's move on to the share and show. It says use a common denominator to write equivalent fractions with like denominators and then find the sum. Write your answer in simplest form. So we are going to find that common denominator. We have a five and we have a four. So I'm gonna come over here to the side and write five and four, five, 10, 15, 20. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. So I see that they have 20 in common. Uh, if I found that they didn't have anything in common, I would just keep my uh, multiples going. But I know that they have 20 in common. So that's going to be my denominator. Now I have to figure out what times 4 is going to give me 20. I know that 5 times 4 gives me 20. So I'm going to multiply my 3 times 5. And that's going to give me 15. And then I bring across my whole number. That The whole number doesn't change. You just bring it all the way across. And now let's look at this next one. I know 5 times what is going to give me 20. 5 times 4 gives me 20. And whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So now 2 times 4 is going to give me 8. And I bring across my whole number. Now I'm going to go ahead and add. I know that 8 plus 15 is going to give me 23. So I'm going to put down my 23 20ths. And then 7 plus 4 is going to give me 11. So I would have 11 and 23 20ths. And it says, go back to the directions, write in simplest form. Okay. 11, 20, 11, and 23 twentieths is not in simplest form. So now what I have to do, I have to figure out how many times will 20 go into 23. It'll go in at one time with three left over. So 1 twentieth plus our 11 that we already had. Okay, so that would give me 12 and 3 twentieths. So that would be my final answer in simplest form. All right, now I'm, we're going to do a couple more together and then I'm going to let you do a few on your own. So this one, it says find the sum, write your answer in simplest form. So sometimes you, if you line it up like this, it's easier. I find that lining it up sideways is easier, um, but to each their own, whatever works best for you. So I see my, my denominator is 10 and 4, so I'm going to go ahead and list out my fact, my multiples of 4 and 10. So I have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, then I have 10, 20, so I know that they have 20 in common. So now that's my denominator. I have 20, 20. I know that 4 times what number is going to give me 20? 4 times 5. So I do the same thing for my numerator. 3 times 5 is 15. And then I bring down my 2, because that doesn't change. Plus, 10 times 2 is going to give me 20. So I multiply my numerator times 2, which gives me 4, sorry, 6. Bring down your whole number. So now I can just add. Now I have... 15 plus 6 is 21 twentieths, and then 2 plus 3 is 5, so now I have 5 
and 21 twentieths. Now, that's not in simplest form. We have to get it into that simplest form. So now I have, I know that 20 will go into 21 one whole time with one left over. So I have one and one twentieth plus my five holes. So that would be six and one twentieth. Okay, sometimes it's easier to write it out that way instead of just doing it in your head. You can do it in your head if you are good at it or if you're able to. If not, write it down. All right, so now let's do number three. Make it a little bit bigger for you. All right, so now I have, I have a four and I have a three. Now I'm going to go ahead and list out my multiples of four and three. So four, I have four, eight. 12, 16, 20, my threes, I have three, six, nine, 12, and I see that I already have 12 as a least, as a common multiple. So now my denominator is going to be 12 and 12. I know that four times three is gonna give me 12. So three times three is gonna give me nine and bring down my whole number. I know that 3 times 4 gives me 12, so 1 times 4 is going to give me 4. Bring down my whole number, add it up. So now I have 9 plus 4 is um, 11. No, not 11. 13, sorry. 13 twelfths. I was like, that's more than 12. And then 1 plus 5 is 6. So I have 6 and 13 twelfths. I know that 12 will go into 13 one whole time with one left over. So I have 1 and 1 twelfth plus my 6 that I already had. So that would be 7 and 1 twelfth. Okay? All right, so now this one I'm going to let you do it on your own. I want you to see if you get the same thing. I want you to find the least common multiple and then um, go ahead and have that as your fraction. So go ahead, pause the video, and work this one out. All right, here is what I got. I found that the 10 was the least common denominator or least common multiple. Um, and then I added up my problem. I had 5 and 11 tenths, and I knew that that was not in simplest form, so I reduced it to get 6 and 1 tenth. So hopefully you got that and you were like, yes, I've got this. I know what I'm doing and I'm super proud of you. If you do, if you don't, I'm still proud of you working hard, but I want you to go back and see what you did wrong and fix it. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to number five. These you're finding the difference. So those last ones you're finding the sum and these you're finding the difference. So let's go ahead and do number not number five. We're going to do this one together again because it is a little bit different when we're looking for the difference rather than the sum. All right, so now I have my denominator of six and three. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to find a common denominator. So I'm going to list out my factors of six and three. So I have six, 12, 18, 24, 30. And then we'll list out my factors of three, three, six, nine. And I already see that six is the least common, the smallest. So now I know that my denominator is going to be six. Now, this one is already six, so this one doesn't change at all. I leave that one exactly the same. Now I'm looking at this one. I know three times two is going to give me six, so then I know I'm going to multiply my one times two, which gives me two, and then I bring down my whole number. Now I subtract it. Now I have five minus two is three, six. Nine minus two is seven. So now I'm left with seven and three six, but that's not in not the smallest or simplest form because remember we have to do simplest form. So then I would divide both my three by three and my six by three, which would give me one half. So my simplest form would be seven and one half because remember you're not reducing your whole number; you're just going to reduce the fraction itself. All right, let's look at number ten. So I have the denominator of 9 and 6, so I'm going to list out my multiples of 9 and 6. I have 9 
18, 27, 36. I think I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to list out my factors of 6. I have 6, 12, 18, and I already see that they have 18 in common. So my common denominator is going to be 18, 18. Now let's go ahead and work it out. I know that 9 times 2 gives me 18. So 2 times 5 is going to give me 10, and then I bring down my 10. Minus, 6 will go into 18 3 times. 3 times 1 is 3, bring down my 9. So now I, ha I can subtract it. 10 minus 3 is 7 18 10 minus 9 is 1, so I have 1 and 7 18 So it should look like that. And it's already in its simplest form. There's nothing divisible by both 7 and 18, so I'm good to go. All right, the last one. I'm going to let you do this one on your own, just like you did with the additional one. Pause the video and then check your work after. All right, so I ended up with 4 and 3 6, but I know that it's not in its simplest form because I can divide both my 3 and my 6 by 3, which would give me 1 half. So my final answer would be 4 and 1 half. All right, so hopefully you've got this. If you don't, you still don't understand, make sure you come back to me so that I can help explain it. Um, what I'm wanting you to do on your own is I want you to do 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16. So 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16. Flip to the back and I want you to do number 25, number 26, and number 29. Okay, I want you to do those for me. Um, take your time, do your best, and like I said, if you have any questions, please, please, please come and see me so I can help you. Okay, good luck, guys.